Hey guys, it's Dwight Simpson from Simpson Properties and today we're going to be hanging drywall. It's not my most favorite job, but this guy right here makes it a hell of a lot easier. It's $45 a day to rent from Home Depot. It is well worth it. It's called a drywall panel lift and this one the manufacturer is Panel Lift by Telpro. Do it. Rent it. It saves your back. It saves your helper. Look at this. Right now the sheet is being held by it. It just makes your life so much easier. And whenever you're putting up your drywall, it's important to remember, always have it perpendicular to, way, to the way your res channel or your joists are. Okay, the first thing you wanna do is mark on your drywall where the res channel is. So you're gonna just put a little tick marking the center of each res channel. And one you obviously don't have to mark. Okay, you ready, Gord? Yeah. Then we're using a T-square and marking on the drywall where our res channel is. That way we know where to put the screws. So now your res channel is hung up and you're ready to hang drywall. So you want to use either inch or inch and a quarter drywall screws, fine thread. Now it's very critical not to install the screw through the channel and the ceiling joist because if you do that, you're defeating the whole purpose of installing the res channel and you're shorting out the system. The whole purpose is to decouple your drywall from the wood structure. So when you hang your drywall, you want to make sure the drywall screw is just into the channel and not going through the channel and the ceiling joists. Because if it's done correctly, the only place where you can get vibration transmission is through this screw right here. But a lot of that vibration is lost through the zigzags and the slots that are cut in the channel. This is another tool that will make your life a lot easier. It's designed to put in drywall screws and you can set the depth once you get it right. And the correct depth is you want your drywall screw to be flush with the paper. So it shouldn't be recessed in, obviously shouldn't be sticking out, but it should be flush. Because if you go in too far, then what can happen is there's not too much for the tape or sorry, the drywall itself to hold on to and you'll end up getting cracks in your ceiling. So just have the drywall screw flush. It helps if you make a rough sketch prior to installing the drywall of any HVAC vents, pot lights, device boxes, or access panel areas with reference measurements off of two walls. If any devices hang below the res channel or ceiling joist, don't fasten the screws too close to this area until the opening has been cut or else you can damage the drywall. You can use a drywall saw or cutout tool to make any openings. Cut the inside of the device opening first, then you can make a clean pass around the outside edge for a clean cut. The brand of cutout tool used in this video is Rotozip. I would not recommend using this brand. I went through two of these tools on this job alone from Burnt Out Motors. I upgraded to a DeWalt and it performs much better. And 
in order to drop the lift, all you have to do is this brake handle, just push it up, that releases it, and keep your other hand firmly on this wheel or else it'll let go. And just slowly crank it down. When it comes to mudding and taping a large area like this, I sub the workout. Mudding and taping is an art, and if you don't do it every day, it could be very time consuming and leave a poor finish. I use LIS Drywall. Norbert and his team do excellent work and are very reliable. If you live in Barrie, Toronto, or the GTA, I highly recommend checking these guys out at lisdrywall.ca. A link to their site can be found in the description below. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the like button and to stay connected, subscribe to my channel. You can also follow me on Instagram.